Morning everybody, um, my name's Nick Mills, I'm um, a research officer from Transport for Greater Manchester, I work in the uh, strategy department. Um, I'm filling in today for Anne Clark, who's our uh, walking and cycling evaluation officer, some of you may know. Um, I'm going to go through um, some of our strategic research that we've done on uh, walking. Um, it's generally these um, resources aren't necessarily pure, pure walking surveys. They're gen generally um, walking as part of a sort of multimodal approach. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of talk through each one. I've not necessarily sort of uh, gone through each one in turn. So I'll just identify the, the sort of context of, um, of the survey as I go through the results. Um, so it's, it's things to um, bear in mind. These are the, the sort of pieces that I'm going to go through just as a, as a bit of background. So we have our TRAD survey, which is a travel diary survey. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, that in a second. The sales funnel, which some of you may have seen, which is um, a sort of classification of how people feel about um, about well, all modes of transport, but walking in, in this case. Um, access and inclusion, which is um, a, a survey we did from 2019, so it's pre-pandemic, but it's, it's interesting to sort of uh, look at how people's uh, walking behaviour um, fitted into um, their overall tra travel to destinations. What we're looking at in that survey is how people got to different places. Um, network principles is about the um, TFGM 2040 um, network um, transport strategy um, which um, identifies seven network principles so that survey really is a tracker to see how people feel about um, the various elements of um, the GM transport network and we have an exclusive sort of walking um, section within that. Um, and National Highways and Transportation Survey um, or NHT um, is a kind of national tracker and all 10 districts of, um, of greater, uh, within Greater Manchester take part in that. There are sort of various um, satisfaction measures in there um, about um, walking infrastructure and walking conditions, um, specifically around pavements and, um, and that type of thing. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go through. So to start with, this is the um, Greater Manchester Travel Diary Survey. Um, this has been going since um, 2011. It's a survey that um, is um, continuous, so we're constantly looking, uh, or people are constantly replying to this survey. It's a um, travel diary, so it's looking purely at where people go and how, how long it takes them. It's, it's very factual about uh, people's travel behaviour. Um, it's high quality data, it's something that we rely on quite a lot in, within, within uh, our, our organisation. And, um, and, uh, and it does pick up uh, walking within it. We tend, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about walking here is um, walking for 20 minutes uh, or more in one trip. So it's very, it, it doesn't distinguish between the, the purpose within this. So it's not necessarily walking for leisure or walking for particular, uh, for anything like that. We're looking at uh, 20 minute chunks in this case. Um, so one of the things with TRADS is that over the pandemic, we had to sort of pause it for a period. We weren't able to, to go out. It's, um, it's a, a household survey, so we weren't able to go to people's house, houses to complete the, uh, complete the travel diary. Um, so the 2021 is the first, um, first sort of uh, iteration we've had since 2020. Um, and this is the kind of uh, the, the split of the GM population down the left-hand side. So 80% of the GM population walk for 20 minutes or more on one trip at least once a week. Um, is a, a sort of headline measure from that. Um, the second point is really about the change, and that there is sort of um, a, an issue that, uh, that Scott alluded to in, in his presentation there. And the da daily number of walking trips was down by about 20% from t 2019 to 2021, from 1.6 million per day to 1.3 million per day. So there's a shift down in the the number of uh, walking trips there. However, the percentage of all trips made by walking actually increased uh, compared to 2019. So what 
basically has happened is that all, tra transport, all travel has gone down a bit in the, the period between 2019 and 2021. Walking has probably sort of stayed a little bit more um, steady, if you like, or the number of uh, walking trips has, re has re remained st more steady compared to other trips that people were making. So it's, um, it's if, if you like, it's, uh, it makes more sense if you, if you think about it, but, um, but walking is probably one of those, um, is, is one of the modes which is likely to be less affected by the pandemic. Uh, people were walking more during the pandemic because of uh, fear of, uh, or inability to use other modes. Um, so 32% of trips were made by walking in 2021 compared to 29% 20, uh, in 20, 2019. And the final point there, the average walking trip is uh, 0.8 kilometres in, uh, in that sense. But, uh, but yeah, but we'll come back to that kind of um, that, that, uh, time and distance element later on. 58% of, of all trips under two kilometres are made by walking. So this is the sales funnel. This is more about how people feel about walking. So what we have um, within this, we've done this survey twice, is, and it's really to sort of look at which uh, how people feel about particular modes of transport. So we do it for tram, train, bus, cycling, um, and walking. Um, we have five different categories, if you like, and they're, they're based on frequency of use and they're based on satisfaction with that use. So your champions are people who are um, regular walkers and would recommend it to other people. So they're, they're, they're a sort of uh, highly satisfied group. Usuals are people who are um, regular walkers but wouldn't necessarily um, recommend it. Dabblers, less frequent. Right down to rejectors who are people who wouldn't really consider it under any circumstance. Um, what you can see is the split between 2018 on the bottom and 2021 on the top is that the number of champions has gone down, um, but the uh, uh, number of projectors has remained sort of similar and it's kind of shifted down a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of talk through some of the, uh, the reasons that come a little bit more clear, I think, when we go through what, what, what each group means in a little bit more detail. So to start with, we'll start right at the far end with the, the rejectors. So these are non-users who wouldn't consider using it. 3% um, of the overall market, and um, or travel market, I suppose it's a really bad phrase to use, but yeah, it's 3% uh, uh, of the overall sample, and uh, rejectors are more likely to be 60 plus years old, um, living in those districts there, Bury Oldham, um, Salford or Wigan. So they tend to be, um, with the exception of Salford, tend to be more around the outside of uh, Greater Manchester. Um, very unconfident using the internet, which is kind of a correlation perhaps with the age rather than uh, anything else. Um, and have not or would not consider making uh, multimodal journeys. <coughs> and we have a whole raft of reasons down the right hand side of why people wouldn't uh, wouldn't consider walking or why they, they, they reject it and um, primarily those are sort of uh, journey time and length for not fit or confident and uh, or disability or health and so there's a there's a kind of circumstance element that people uh, people that pulls people away in this case not nows are um, uh, the, the uh, non-users who are not u against using it, but uh, either choose not to or circumstances don't allow it. Um, and again, they're sort of based at Bolton, Rochdale, Wigan residents, so they're again around the, the sort of outskirts, if you like, or the, the sort of uh, the, the, the less sort of uh, dense urban areas of Greater Manchester. 35 to 59 year olds, um, so they're going to be amongst the sort of like high, higher driving um, uh, groups uh, working um, and um, from that group down there five comfortable communities where, um, when Scott was talking about the output area classification we tend not to use that we, we tend to use um, the acorn um, group which is a which is a very similar kind of 
thing, really and truthfully. Um, but it puts it down. Uh, but we have sort of five um, top top level categories from within that. Uh, comfortable communities are pretty much what you, what um, Theresa May called the squeeze middle. Um, so they're, they're they're group three of five, if you like, and uh, they tend to be suburban and um, uh, in sort of. Uh, um, kind of middle middle income brackets. Um, we're asking people what who could reasonably walk through these journeys why they didn't want to, and again the journey journey um, length and time, fit, being fit and confident or preferring other forms of transport were the key reasons, and what would encourage them in these situations uh, to undertake those journeys. So improved travel conditions don't know, or if I wanted to um, exercise or improve my fit, fitness. So there's, there's some sort of fa fairly vague re reasons there in terms of encouragement. For dabblers, and these are occasional users who may or may not be satisfied with their experience, um, that again, similar, similar um, age group, the 35 to 59 group, um, and, and again, it's a similar sort of um, proportion of the, the overall uh, sample. But, uh, the Thameside, Wigan, Rochdale and Stockport residents uh, tend to form among those groups and again it's, it's walk, walking. Um, the affluent achievers uh, the, the slightly, uh, is a slight difference in this group. Um, so that's um, the top group if you like in the, in the acorn categories, top group, not group one. It's the, <coughs> so if you think of it in terms of income it's, um, it's probably the, the sort of people who are living in um, uh, more, more sort of uh, well, uh, affluent areas. Um, in terms of what um, would improve their um, experience if they're neutral or satisfied, uh, most people said that there wasn't really anything that would uh, improve, improve their experience. Um, but um, in terms of what would, and li likewise, what would encourage a greater frequency, nothing. So. Uh, they're not necessarily looking to work, if you like. Uh, work, walk, sorry. Habitual users are, are, who are neutral or dissatisfied, um, or satisfied but would not recommend. This is, this is quite a big group, um, the usuals. And again, we're starting to get into the group who, who are more frequent uh, walkers, um, but tend to be younger, they tend to be um, from Manchester or Salford, so again, in, in a slightly more um, urban setting. Um, the rising prosperity is the um, acorn group, which is the small, uh, acorn category, which is the smallest, um, smallest size of, the, the, of Greater Manchester. And it tends to be people living in flats and um, within, um, within city centres and so forth. So it's, um, it, it's I suppose it's, um, I can't remember the actual groups that they group names that they use, but it's kind of um, people living in, in more sort of up and coming areas, I suppose. Um, and they have a, a sort of greater propensity to use public transport, which again fits into the sort of areas they're living in. In terms of what would improve their experience, and this is a group that sort of uh, is, is already walking quite a bit, but not necessarily happy with it. So there's um, wider footpaths and drop curbs, improved pa pavement conditions and improved tra travel conditions, e.g. weather, air quality, traffic and so forth. They're, they're all things that um, would improve uh, the experience of this particular group. And bear, bear in, in mind that, uh, that, that they sort of are walking quite a lot already. That's, um, that's something to bear in mind. So they do have experience of it. Um, and the champions, again, were 44%, a big a big group, even though it's declined slightly in 2021. Um, there's a big age range for this, but, uh, but, but again, they're in the, the Manchester or Trafford resident uh, groups. Um, they tend to be sort of working, confident using the, the internet. There's a rising prosperity um, uh, element as well. Um, and there's a, a list down the right hand side, which I think is quite useful, of um, why people recommend walking so those are the types of things that people have named as um, as the benefits that they experience from walking um, so physical health enjoyable mental health 
I'm sure we're very familiar with these. <laughs> so, it's, uh, so yeah, there, there's, there's lots of things down there which, um, which would be the, the reasons why people would recommend walking as an activity. We asked people how long they would walk before they, or how, lo how long the journey would be before they ruled it out. So, so the actual question was, if you were making a journey to somewhere from home, what's the longest you would be prepared to walk for in minutes? And it's only asked of um, champions, usuals, or dabblers, so people who are well walking um, a reasonable amount of, of time already. And 30, 30 minutes is the actual um, threshold that, uh, that people replied. So they're, they're, they're kind of uh, the top, the top um, distance or time that they would be willing to do is uh, 30 minutes. And I'll come back to that a little bit when we start to look at um, the access and inclusion results as well. So that's a very whistle-stop tour of sales funnel. And the, the whole purpose of that really is for us to enable us to sort of target particular interventions based on the people's uh, or the ponderous of, uh, of of groups in particular areas. Um, what we're working on with this at the moment is um, a sales funnel index, so we can link it to geography or specific, um, or um, where, where, if you like, the most champions live, where, with, um, where the most uh, rejectors live, etc. Um, but that's it, that's in develop, development at the moment. At the moment, we're sort of using it more as a kind of um, as a as a sort of segmentation. This is access and inclusion, and I, it's probably quite difficult to read for, from, from, the, from here, so I'll, I'll talk you through it. Um, this is from 2019, so it's pre-pandemic. It's um, an overall survey that asked people where they went to, their, their destinations, and how, how, easy, or how they got there, how long it took them, um, and um, how easy it was, and we started to look at some of the, um, the barriers that people were experiencing getting to certain places. So we had 30, uh, 13 des <coughs> destinations down the left-hand side. Um, so they, they go from things that you might expect, like work and um, uh, food shopping, um, to some, some of the sort of less, um, less researched elements, such as going to a place of worship, going to um, escorting children to school, um, we have going to a green space um, park, going for a walk at the top there. And, um, and this chart shows in blue um, how, how many people, or what percentage of people uh, walked to those, um, to those destinations. And bear in mind this, this is just people who, are, who have expressed that this is an important destination to them. We, we, didn't, we didn't ask them if they, they weren't necessarily going to these places. So if those people who were going to green space, 75% of people would just walk in, 77% were walking with other modes, which is the pink bit. And, um, and likewise, you, as you go down there, you can see that uh, um, the schools and children to primary school, going to a place of worship, GP, lo local health centre, they're, they're all sort of um, relatively, what you'd expect to be relatively local um, destinations. Um, and when you get to the bottom, you have um, things such as other health service, e.g. hospital, which is the bottom one, and uh, most people won't be able to, or a lot of people weren't able to walk to that. Um, likewise, going to a place of leisure and work uh, were relatively low. <coughs> I won't dwell too much on this, but um, in terms of uh, looking at um, time journeys for um, those who, have, who are walking at least partly by, who are getting to these places at least partly by walking. Um, all of those destinations fell well below the 30 minute threshold. Um, so we've got sort of 20 down to 10 really. And, um, and there's, uh, there's some fluctuation there, but, uh, but yeah, that's, it's, I suppose the key thing is that it's below about 30 minute threshold. We also asked people how easy it was to get to those particular destinations. So generally people said uh, the actual rank was um, easy, I can't remember actually, it's easy, easy um, difficult or, or don't do it. And um, in actual fact, the, the people um, generally, the 
but it's sort of, I think it was one in four had um, some difficulty getting to a particular destina uh, destination, but actual individual destinations didn't show huge um, difficulty getting there. But what, the, what was, it did show was that uh, generally people who were accessing by foot um, at least part of the journey were likely to say that it was a lot easier to get there. And that was um, probably down to um, proximity, but uh, but also due to the, the lack of other issues which were identified in uh, by champions in terms of lack of stress of driving, lack of stress from using other forms of transport, etc. So there's a there's a definite sort of easy. It's easier to get to to places if you like by walking. So that's um, a little bit of um, access and inclusion. We haven't really got the sample size to be able to dwell, delve too much into the, um, the specific barriers, but the, there are sort of um, some barriers identified by, then, by, by walkers in terms of getting to certain places, generally related to time and safety. Um, so safety is something that I'm going to pick up next, which is from the, our network principles survey. Um, this is, as I say, a tracking survey about the uh, 2040 um, transport strategy. But what we're looking at specifically here is um, feedback from walkers. So we ask um, 400 walkers um, who walk frequently, i.e. once a week, and 400 infrequent walkers who do it less than once a week, but do it in a, um, the past year. And uh, there's some um, sort of satisfaction questions with various elements of walking. I've picked up the um, safety ones in particular here. Um, so we ask about feeling safe from traffic, um, both during the day and at night, and personal security when walking during the day and walking at night. So if you like feeling safe from things and feeling safe from people, there's a distinction there. Um, generally, as you can see on the left-hand side, those are three years that we've run the survey. Um, in 2021, we had to do a telephone survey because we weren't able to do face-to-face, -face, which was the, um, the normal method for this survey. So we did get slightly different results there because it was in the middle of restrictions. Um, consequently, the personal security while walking at night was lower. It was lower in quite a lot of other modes as well. Um, and I think people possibly sort of like were um, slightly more aware of personal security at that time. Um, the method has gone back to what it was, and as you can see, the, uh, the level is, um, is, re is has remained um, uh, consistent to the baseline level. The uh, chart on the right is showing the difference between the infrequent and the frequent, so there's not a um, not huge difference there, apart from feeling safe from traffic during the day. This is the split by um, demographic group for those particular um, elements. So by gender, um, these are consistent. We see these every, every time. Um, feeling safe from traffic at night, personal security while walking at night. Uh, women are significantly less satisfied than men with that element. Um, in this case, they're also um, less satisfied with personal security while walking in during the day as well. We also see the at night difference by people uh, without a disability or people with a disability. We haven't got the sample size to be able to split it by condition, unfortunately, but there is um, uh, people with disabilities there feeling def definitely uh, more vulnerable. Actually, that's within the day, I beg your pardon. And the reason why it's in the day and not at night, even though it's lower, is that um, those pe at night, a lot of people aren't necessarily doing the thing. So if, you're, if you reply not applicable to the question, you're outside of the, um, you're outside of the, uh, the satisfaction percentages, because these are very much about what people are doing with that. It's worth noting that about a third of women reply not applicable for safety at uh, at night, either from traffic or from people. And uh, it's around about the same for um, people with disability as well, possibly even higher. So there's, there's evidence there that people um, d just don't do it if they don't feel safe. So in, in many respects, if they, if they did reply, uh, 
how they felt or how they expected to feel, it would probably be even lower than that. Um, and by age band, you can see that um, there's a decline by age in most cases. Um, people 16 to 34 generally lower, um, uh, generally, sorry, I beg your pardon, are generally more satisfied with their safety either from traffic or from um, uh, personal security.